Hello and welcome to the MCQ lecture series. In today's class, we are going to look at some of the important multiple choice questions with respect to economic development and planning, which is the economics general paper for TYBA. So, let us get started. The first question is dash is a technique through which a predetermined and well defined aims and objectives laid down by the central authority are achieved or realized, whether it is a planning, b economic governance. C political economy or D none of the above. It is a technique through which a predetermined and well defined aims and objectives laid down by the central authority are realized or achieved. And the correct answer here is A planning. So, planning is a technique through which a predetermined and well defined aims and objectives laid down by the central authority are achieved. Let us now move to the next one. The objectives envisaged under planning are dash. And the underlying options are A economic, B social, C political, D military and we have to select the correct answer. So, first option suggests that the objectives envisaged under planning are A and B that is economic and social objectives. The second option suggests that it is B and C that is the objectives envisaged under planning are social and political. The third is suggesting A, B and C that is economic, social and political and the last is saying it is all of the above that means the objectives envisaged under planning are economic objectives, social objectives, political objectives as well as military objectives. So, here the correct answer is option 4 all of the above. So, option 4 is the correct answer with respect to question number 2. I hope that is clear. Let us now move to question number 3. Dash defines planning as collective control or suppression of private activities of production and exchange dash defines planning or who defines planning as the collective control or suppression of private activities of production and exchange whether it is a lewis b robbins c zevic or d none of the above so here the correct answer is option b robbins defines planning as collective control or suppression of private activities of production and exchange so option b robbins is the correct answer let us now move to the next one Dash defines planning as the direction of productive activity by central authority, the direction of productive activities by the central authority, whether it is A. Robbins, B. Hayek, C. Dalton or D. None of the above. So, here the correct answer is it is Hayek who defines planning as the direction of productive activities by the central authority. So, option B. Hayek is the correct answer with respect to question number 4. I hope that is clear. Let us now move to the next one. According to Dash, Economic planning in the widest sense is the deliberate direction by persons in charge of the larger resources of economic activity towards the chosen ends. Who defines economic planning in the widest sense that it is the deliberate attempt or direction by the persons in charge of large resources of economic activity towards their chosen ends whether it is A. Robbins, B. Dalton. C. Hayek or D. None of the above. So, here the correct answer is option B. Dalton explains economic planning in this sense wherein it is the deliberate direction by persons in charge of larger resources of economic activity towards the chosen ends. So, option B. Dalton is the correct answer with respect to this question. Let us now move to the next one which of the following denotes the need for planning in underdeveloped countries, the need for planning in underdeveloped countries whether it is A to increase the rate of economic development, B to improve and strengthen market mechanisms, C to remove unemployment or D all of the above the need for planning in underdeveloped countries and all of the above points denotes the need for planning in underdeveloped countries that means it is to increase the rate of economic development, improve and strengthen market mechanisms as well as remove unemployment. So, option D all of the above is the correct answer with respect to this question. The next question is one and the same the options are different which of the following denotes the need for planning a very general sort of question which of the following denotes the need for planning and the underlying options are a balanced development of the economy b removing poverty c removing inequality both on the uh, income front as well as wealth front and last is all of the above so here again the need for planning is denoted by all these three points a b and c and therefore option d all of the above is the correct answer with respect to this question that means the need for economic planning is 
to remove poverty, to remove inequality and also for balanced development of the economy. So, in question number 6 and 7, we have seen 6 important needs for planning in underdeveloped countries or in economies in general. So, and the reasons are to increase the rate of economic development, to improve and strengthen the market mechanism, to remove unemployment, to remove poverty, removing inequality and for balanced development of the economy. So, here are 6 important needs for planning in underdeveloped countries or in general in any economy per se. Let us now move to question 8. Balanced development of the economy under the need for planning includes what all things. So, we have seen that one of the needs for planning is the balanced development of the economy and under that what all things are included with, uh, and the underlying options are a development of industrial and agricultural sector, b development of infrastructure, c development of money markets and capital market and d all of the above. So, here the correct answer is option d all of the above that means balanced development of the economy under the need for planning includes the development of industries as well as agricultural sector, development of infrastructure as well as the money and capital market and therefore, option D all of the above is the correct answer with respect to this question. I hope that is clear. Let us now move to the next one. The formulation and success of a plan requires dash or what are the conditions for formulation and success of a plan whether it is a planning commission, B statistical data, C objectives of the plan or D all of the above. So, here the formulation and success of a plan requires all these important things that means it requires a planning commission, it requires certain underlying objectives of that particular plan and also the statistical data to support that plan or to formulate that plan. So, option D all of the above is the correct answer with respect to this question. I hope that is clear. Let us now move to question number 10. The formulation and success of a plan requires dash again a similar sort of question and the underlying options are A fixation of targets and priorities that means a plan to be successful and to formulate that plan you need certain targets as well as priorities B mobilization of resources you need certain resources to go forward towards the plan C efficient administration you need efficient uh, skill or the workforce so as to undertake the formulation of the plan and then implement that plan successfully and D all of the above. So, here again option D all of the above is the correct answer with respect to this question which talks about the requirements for formulation and success of a plan. So, in question number 9 and 10 we have seen 6 important uh, points wherein uh, we see that these are the requirements for formulation and success of a plan. Let us now move to question number 11. <clears throat> the question is the formulation and success of plan requires dash again a similar sort of question and the underlying options are a proper development policy, b cooperation of the population or people of that particular country or region or area, c literacy and ethics that means literacy with respect to the formulation of the plan and also ethics in the successful implementation of the plan and d all of the above. So, here again option D all of the above are the requirements for the formulation and success of a plan and therefore, option D all of the above is the correct answer. So, in question number 9, 10 and 11, we have seen 9 important requirements for formulation and success of a development plan and they are a planning commission or rather planning commission, statistical data, objectives, fixed targets and priorities, mobilization of resources, efficient administration proper development policy, cooperation of the population and literacy and ethics in formulation and success of a particular plan. So, or implementation of a particular plan. So, these were 9 important requirements for formulation and success of a development plan. I hope they are pretty much clear. Let us now move to the next one. Question number 12 is development planning has to face dash problems and the underlying options are A inadequacy of data, B problems of macroeconomic data, C limitations in the use of economic models and D all of the above. So, here the correct answer is which of the following denotes the 
problems associated with development planning all of the above that is option D that means there is inadequacy of data problems with respect to macroeconomic data as well as limitations in the use of economic models and therefore option D all of the above is the correct answer with respect to this question. Let us now move to question number 13 question is which of the following denotes the problems of development planning the problems of development planning and the underlying options are a no control over private sector plans b budgetary constraints c uncertainties and d all of the above so here again option d all of the above is the correct answer with respect to this question that means the problems of development planning are there is no control over private sector plans there are budgetary constraints and also underlying uncertainties and therefore option d all of the above is the correct answer in question number 12 and 13 we have seen six important problems associated with development planning and they are inadequacy of data problems of macroeconomic data limitations in the use of economic models no control over the private sector plans budgetary constraints as well as underlying uncertainties so six important problems faced by or faced with respect to develop, development planning let us now move to question number 14 question number 14 is dash is an integral part of a socialist society like china and russia dash is an integral part of societies like the chinese one and the russian ones it is a socialist sort of system whether it is a planning by direction b planning by inducement c planning by finances or d none of the above so here the correct answer is it is planning by direction is an integral part of socialist societies like china and russia that means the socialist party has entire control over the directions in which the money has to be induced or the money has to be planted so as to bring about development so here option a planning by direction is the correct answer with respect to this question let us now move to the next one dash is a democratic planning which means that planning is done by manipulating the markets dash is a democratic planning which means that planning is done by manipulating the market and the underlying options are a planning by direction b planning by inducement c planning by finances or d none of the above so here the correct answer is it is planning by inducement is a democratic planning which means that planning is done by manipulating the markets and therefore option b planning by inducement is the correct answer with respect to this question i hope that is clear let us now move to question number 16 dash refers to the technique of planning in which resources are allocated in terms of money the resource allocation is happening in terms of money so what do you call such a technique of planning whether it is a financial planning b physical planning c good planning or d bad planning so here the correct answer is financial planning option a refers to the technique of planning in which resources are located in terms of money and therefore option a is the correct answer with respect to question number 16 let's now move to question number 17 dash pertains to the allocation of resources in terms of men materials and machinery here the allocation of resources is happening in terms of men materials and machinery so it, whether it is a financial planning b physical planning c good planning or d bad planning very uh, obvious to answer this question that it has to be physical planning because men material and machinery is uh, involved in terms of resources per se so option b physical planning is the correct answer with respect to this question let us now move to the next one dash refers to long term planning in which long range targets are set in advance for a period of 15 years 20 years or 25 years so what is happening is it is a long term planning in which long range targets are set well in advance for a period of 15 20 or 25 years whether it is a annual planning b long term planning c perspective planning or d short term planning so here the correct answer is it is a long term sort of a planning in which long range targets are set in advance for 15 20 25 years so it is a perspective sort of a planning so option c perspective planning is the correct answer with respect to this question i hope that is clear let us now move to the next one a perspective plan is often split up into short term plans of 5 years and these are further subdivided into 12 month plans known as dash so there's a big plan or a long term plan with long range targets you subdivide that into short term plans of 5 years and these five year plans are further subdivided into 12 month plan known as a annual planning b long term planning 
see perspective planning or the short term planning see here 12 month period so it has to be annual planning and therefore option a annual planning is the correct answer with respect to question number 19 i hope that is clear let us now move to question number 20 20 is dash refers to planning which is based on the principle of decentralization in operation and execution of national plan a principle on which it is dependent this plan is called as the principle of decentralization in which the operation as well as execution of the national plan is decentralized so whether it is a operational planning b indicative planning c imperative planning or d none of the above so here the correct answer is option b indicative planning refers to the planning in which or which is based on the principle of decentralization in operation as well as execution of the national plan so option b indicative planning is the correct answer with respect to question number 20 i hope that is clear let us now move to the next one indicative planning is also known as what and the underlying options are a hard planning b soft planning c easy planning or d none of the above so here the correct answer is indicative planning is also known as option b soft planning so you will also find this term you being used soft planning so it is nothing but indicative planning which uses the principle of decentralization in operation as well as execution of national plan so here option b soft planning was the correct answer with respect to question number 21 let's now move to question number 22 the question is dash planning is peculiar to mixed economy of france in which the private sector is neither rigidly controlled nor directed to fulfill the targets and priorities of the plan this is only limited to the economy or mixed economy of france so here what do you call such a planning whether it is a operational planning b indicative planning c imperative planning or d none of the above so here the correct answer is it is indicative planning which is peculiar to the mixed economy of france in which the private sector is neither rigidly controlled nor directed to fulfill the targets and priorities of the plan so option b indicative planning is the correct answer with respect to this question i hope that is clear let us now move to question number 23 the question is dash refers to the planning in which all the economic activities and resources of the economy operate under the direction of the state a planning wherein all the economic activities and resources of the economy operate under the direction of the state and the underlying options are a development planning b indicative planning c imperative planning or d none of the above so here the correct answer is it is the imperative planning so the examples of imperative planning can be china and russia the socialist economic system wherein everything is under the state so option c imperative planning is the correct answer with respect to question number 23 let us now to move to question number 24 dash plan lays down definite aims and objectives which are required to be achieved during the plan period usually five six and seven years targets or objectives whether it is a rolling plan b fixed plan c demo plan or d none of the above dash plan lays down definite aims and objectives which are required to be achieved during the plan period so here the correct answer is it is a fixed plan which has definite aims and objectives which are required to be achieved during that plan period so option b fixed plan is the correct answer with respect to this question i hope that is clear let us now move to question number 25 the question is dash refers to planning where three distinct plans are made the first plan is for current year the second for a short term of four to six year and the third one for 10 15 or 20 years whether it is a rolling plan b fixed plan c natural plan or d none of the above so here <clears throat> the name itself suggests from the option that there are three distinct plans which are made and then it is happening on a rolling basis that means the targets are achieved during the current year for a period of four to six years and then for a period of 10 to 15 years so it is a rolling plan so it is rolling plan refers to planning where three distinct plans are made first is for the current year second for four to six years and the third one for a long range or long term period option a rolling plan is the correct answer let us now move to question number 26 which of the following denotes the economic objectives of planning here i'm specifically looking at the economic objectives of planning and the underlying options are a reducing inequalities on both the fronts that is in terms of income as well as wealth 
B. Higher economic growth. C. Achievement of full employment or achieve full employment. And D. All of the above. So, here which of the following denotes the economic objectives of planning? All the three are economic objectives of planning. That means reducing inequalities of wealth as well as income, higher economic growth and achievement of full employment. So, option D. All of the above is the correct answer with respect to this question. Let us now move to question number 27, a similar sort of question. Which of the following denotes the economic objectives of planning? And the underlying options are A. Self-reliance, B. Elimination of extreme poverty, C. Modernization of various sectors and D. All of the above. So, here again option D. All of the above is the correct answer with respect to the economic objectives of planning. That means, we have to go towards something called as self-reliance, then we have to move towards something called as elimination of extreme poverty as well as modernization of various sectors. So, we have seen six important objectives of or economic objectives rather of planning. They are reducing inequalities both in terms of income and wealth, higher economic growth, achievement of full employment, self-reliance, elimination of extreme poverty and modernization of various sectors. So, six important economic objectives of planning. I hope they are clear. Let us now move to question number 28. Which of the following denotes the social objectives of planning? Here specifically we are looking at the social objectives of planning and the underlying options are A to bring social justice, B to bring social welfare and development, C to work towards optimum utilization of available resources and D all of the above. So, social objectives of planning are denoted by all of the above points that means to bring about social justice social welfare and development as well as to work towards optimum utilization of the available resources and hence option D all of the above is the correct answer with respect to the same. Let us now move to question number 29. The question is uh, which of the following denotes the social objectives of planning similar sort of question and the underlying options are A reduce inequality in terms of social, cultural, regional and political spheres. B to improve the standard of living of the people, C to create educational, health and employment schemes and D all of the above. So, here again the correct answer is the social objectives of planning are denoted by option D all of the above points that means to reduce inequalities in terms of social, cultural, regional, political spheres, improve the standard of living of people, to create educational, health and employment schemes so as to generate income or help them generate income and hence all of the above is the correct answer with respect to the same. So, in question number 28 and 29 we have seen six important social objectives of planning. They are to bring about social welfare and development, to bring social justice, work towards optimum utilization of available resources, reduce inequality in terms of social, cultural, regional and political spheres, improve the standard of living of masses, create educational health and employment schemes so that they can have certain income with respect to these skills which they adhere to or they acquire. So, option D or in both the cases was the correct answer with respect to both these questions and we have got six important social objectives of planning. Let us now move to question number 30. Question is which of the following denotes the political objectives? So, in the previous questions we have seen economic and social objectives. Now, we are moving towards the political objectives of planning and the underlying options are A promote defense, B maintenance of internal peace in the country, C foster cooperative federalism and D all of the above. So, political objectives of planning, option D all of the above are the political objectives of planning that means promoting defense, maintenance of internal peace as well as moving towards cooperative federalism and therefore, option D all of the above is the correct answer with respect to this question. I hope all the three important objectives are pretty much clear that means the economic objectives of planning, the social objectives of planning and the political objectives of planning are pretty much clear. Let us now move to the next one. Dash is the premier policy think tank of the government of India to foster cooperative federalism in the country through bottoms up approach. Which institution is the premier policy think tank of government of India? whether it is A Niti Aayog, B the Press Information Bureau or PIB, C the Planning Commission or D all of the above. So, here the correct answer is Niti Aayog is the premier policy think tank of the government of India to foster cooperative federalism in the country 
through bottoms up approach planning commission was the think tank it was replaced by niti aayog so option a niti aayog is the correct answer with respect to question number 31 let us now move to question number 32 question is who is the current ceo of niti aayog very factual sort of question and the underlying options are a amitabh kant b rajiv kumar c arvind pangaria or d none of the above so here the ceo of niti aayog is option a amitabh kant and therefore option a amitabh kant is the correct answer with respect to the same rajiv kumar is the vice chairman let us now move to question number 33 who is the chairperson or chairman of niti aayog and the underlying options are a the prime minister of india b union finance minister c the president of india d chief justice of supreme court here the correct answer is the chairperson or the chairman of niti aayog is the prime minister of india currently it is narendra modi so option a prime minister of india is the chairperson of niti aayog is the correct answer with respect to this so the vice chairman is rajiv kumar chairman is narendra modi and ceo is amitabh kant i hope all these important um, persons or uh, important uh, chairs are pretty much clear let us now move to question number 34 niti aayog replaced dash whether it is a fipb that is foreign investment promotion board b planning commission c planning board of india or d none of the above so the niti aayog replaced the planning commission so option b planning commission is the correct answer with respect to this question i hope that is clear let us now move to the next one the national institution for transforming india or niti aayog was established on dash whether it was established on 1st of january 2015 1st of february 2015 1st of march 2015 or 1st of april 2015 so here the correct answer is the national institution for transforming india or niti aayog was established on option a 1st of january 2015 and therefore option a is the correct answer with respect to the same i hope that is clear let us now move to the next one which talks about the governing council of niti aayog and the question is which of the following forms a part of the governing council of niti aayog and the underlying options are a all chief ministers of the states b chief minister of delhi and puducherry c lieutenant governors of andaman and nicobar islands and d all of the above so here the correct answer is option d all of the above forms the part of governing council of niti aayog that means all the chief ministers of the states chief ministers of delhi and puducherry as well as the lieutenant governor of andaman and nicobar islands forms a part of governing council of niti aayog or national institution for transforming india i hope that is clear let us now move to the next one which of the following denotes the functions of niti aayog very important the functions of niti aayog and the underlying options are a to foster cooperative federalism b monitoring and evaluation of obviously the policies c designing of policies and act as resource center and knowledge hub and d all of the above so here which of the following denotes the functions of niti aayog all of the above are the functions of niti aayog that means to foster cooperative federalism monitor and evolution uh, evaluation of policies designing of policies and acting as resource center and knowledge hub for research obviously so option d all of the above is the correct answer with respect to question number 37 let us now move to question number 38 which of the following denotes the objectives of niti aayog straightforward objectives of niti aayog and the underlying options are fostering cooperative federalism formulate plans at village levels economic policy that incorporates national security interests and all of the above so here the correct answer is which of the following denotes the objectives of niti aayog all of the above that means fostering cooperative federalism formulate plans at village level economic policy that incorporates national security interests option d all of the above is the correct answer with respect to question number 38 let us now move to question number 39 again a similar sort of question which talks about the objectives of niti aayog question is which of the following denotes the objectives of niti aayog and the underlying options are a undertake constant innovative improvements b create knowledge innovation and entrepreneurial support system c focus on technological upgradation and capacity building and d all of the above so here again which of the following denotes the objectives of niti aayog the correct answer is option d all of the above that means undertake constant innovative innovative improvements and create knowledge innovation entrepreneurial support system focus on technological upgradation and capacity building 
so option d all of the above is the correct answer let us now move to the last question 40th question which of the following denotes the objectives of niti ayog and the underlying options are a platform for resolution of intersectoral and interdepartmental issues b state of art resource center for research on good governance c partnership with national and international think tanks and d all of the above so here again option d all of the above is the correct answer that means in question number or in in the last uh, three questions we have seen that is 38 39 40 we have seen nine important objectives of niti ayog and they are first one fostering cooperative federalism second formulate plans at village level third is economic policy that incorporates national security interests fourth is undertake constant innovative improvements fifth is create knowledge innovation and entrepreneurial support system sixth is focus on technological upgradation and capacity building seventh is platform for resolution of intersectoral and interdepartmental issues seventh is sorry rather eighth is the state of art resource center for research on good governance and ninth is the partnership with international and national think tanks so nine important objectives of niti ayog i hope they are pretty much clear so thank you so much and all the best for your exams